Welcome to MJSA Expo Online. I'm going to introduce our speaker today in just a moment, but first I'd like to do a little housekeeping. If you could just go to the chat box, it's either going to be the right of your video um, display or just underneath it, depending on what size of device you're using. And there, you'll find the chat box there. Just let me know if you can see and hear me okay. And Adam, why don't you say hi? Let's make sure they can hear you too. Good morning, MJSA, good afternoon. Let's see. Okay, Kalina can hear us both and see us both. Lucy can too. I always feel good once we get like two people that can see and hear us. I think we're there. All right. <laughs> and it is two o'clock Eastern time, so we're going to get started. Again, welcome to MJSA Expo Online. This is our um, effort, our very fun effort to help continue building relationships across the MJSA membership and making sure that everyone in MJSA's universe knows just how much we can help each other do better business. And uh, today I have Adam Casson. He is Guess Wine's jewelry manager and their principal contact for Sisma Laser Sales for jewelry. And he's going to talk to us about Sisma Laser and I guess all things laser. Who knows what, what all we're going to talk about? We, we can get talking, right, Adam? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Now, I know you have a PowerPoint to share. Did you want to share that first? Do you have some things you want to share first? How do you want to do this? Yeah, I'll, uh, well, initially, first and foremost, thank you, Ms. Hill, for the warm introduction. Um, I'll talk a little bit, and then we'll get on to the PowerPoint. Um, Your show. We can do whatever you want. North <laughs> Ooh, the flattery. Um <laughs> MJSA, the oldest organization dedicated to the jewelry trade in North America. It is a great pleasure and an honor to be a part of this webinar today. Uh, Shirley is guest wine, dating back to 1914, has a storied history within the jewelry industry. Um, it is a great pleasure to find ways to utilize communications and what's going on in the industry, knowing that we're locked down in this pandemic. Um, so I welcome, I welcome and uh, with open arms, look forward to all that the presentation has to offer. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for MJSA for making this happen. And, yeah, I'm excited to be a part of this. So thank you, everybody. Very cool. So should we switch you over? You got your PowerPoint up? You want me to switch you over? Yeah, so I'm going to PowerPoint up. Um, of course, I'm going to be divulging a lot of information today. Um, I'm going to try to keep it somewhat simplistic. It will be a little bit technical in some respects. Uh, there will be a good amount of video to keep everybody engaged. Uh, but surely, uh, as questions do come up, uh, Ms. Hill uh, being the moderator, uh, we encourage questions and um, we'll answer them promptly. So without further ado, I'd like to bring to you... My I'll give a quick PSA since you're launching some videos during this presentation. So yes. guys, when Adam plays video, there is a possibility that your device is set to automatically mute videos when they launch on the computer. If that's the case, we can't help you with the sound. You're gonna be like chatting away saying, I can't hear that. So when a video launches, either hover your mouse over the bottom of your screen or touch your screen if you're on a touch screen and see if there is an audio button with a line through it showing that you've got video muted. You're, you're going to need to unmute it on your end. We can't fix that for you. If for any reason you have technical problems seeing the presentation, this is all being recorded. It will all be live on the MJSA Expo site later this afternoon. So I hope you get to experience it in real time, but one way or the other, you will get to experience it. So. Excellent. Right. And Adam, we have to remember to mute our microphones when your videos play, or we will literally deafen everybody in the event. <laughs> noted, noted. Not nice. Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to do some shared screen. So let's see. Ms. Hill, are you able to see this? Is everything as it should be as far as seeing? Oops. Maybe not. Uh-oh. Are you still there? Uh oh, I'm having no, audio issues. Sorry, I had muted my microphone in order to be polite. And ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. I just want to verify that when I go to this page right here, that everybody is seeing this. Is that correct? We can see it. Okay, fantastic. So now we can begin. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. 
Uh, my name is Adam Kasson, uh, principal contact at the Guest Wine Company for Seasma Laser Technologies. Um, I'm going to take this in a few different angles, as I'm sure there are people here that are experienced with laser welders. I'm sure some people are saying, what is a laser welder? Um, it's going to encompass a lot. Uh, but first and foremost, of course, uh, the Guess Wine Company, uh, a storied history within the, or the industry, uh, established in 1914. Uh, the history for Guess Wine goes back to actually 1872. Uh, but the Paul H. Guess Wine Company, as it has been known for over 100 years, um, is actually being rebranded as we speak to the Guess Wine Company as new members of leadership and the Guess Wine family are at the helm of the organization. Um, and... Over the last six years uh, that I have been with the company, guess why I decided to bring on Sisma Laser Technologies based in Piovene, Rocchiette, Italy. Uh, Sisma was established in 1914. I'm going to be showing you some nice videos that will further discuss uh, everything that I'm speaking on right now. Uh, but it is a old company, also a family-run business. Um, but noting so, with this seminar, I'm presenting laser technologies. So for those of you who are experienced with lasers or new to lasers, the main focus of this presentation is to talk about what technological advances have been made within laser welding applications and most specifically laser equipment and machinery to ultimately offer end users a greater experience, greater control, lower running costs, and service-free in some respects. So without further ado, I do want to begin this presentation with a nice little company overview of Sisma. So here we are. Not so much. Hey, Adam, the slide didn't advance. I'm still seeing that. Yeah, I saw that. Let's <laughs> see. Go back. There we go. It's still showing the first slide. It's showing the first slide. Yeah, it's not advancing. I wonder, if you have it in presentation mode, I wonder if you need to switch it over to the main display. Because we're seeing... Yeah, and that's what I'm going to try doing here. So let's see here. From current slide. Is this showing? We're still seeing production mode. Is it possible that it's showing on the other monitor you've got going there? Uh, I can disable the other monitor, surely. Yeah, I do have everything on the one page. Let's see. Sorry, everybody, a little technical glitch here. What would life Let's be without out. technical glitches, right? <laughs> it's fun at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. Display settings. Let me just disable here. I will say doing all these webinars that it is clear. I mean, there are differences between all of the jewelry industry associations, but I'm quite confident that MJSA members are among the most resilient members of the jewelry industry. <laughs> Okay. Put yourselves out here for all of these technical difficulties in public. Oh, yo, yo. Let me just try to light this and actually unplug this one monitor. Let's see what that does. And the goal is to not lose you entirely, Adam. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Some things happen. I don't want to be lost either. Is this visible? Okay, so we're still looking at the production screen for PowerPoint. We're not looking at the presentation screen. If you pushed play on that screen, I'm not sure if it would play the video or not in production mode. Okay, and you don't see this right now currently, correct? We see yes, the wine and Sisma. We what we see is the Sisma company overview, the video with the arrow in it, but we can also see all of your slides on the left. Ah. Uh. Okay, why don't I go like this then? Let's see if I can share again. Share screen. 
Now, while we're waiting for this to come through, we want to make sure you guys come back for MJSA Expo next Wednesday, also at 2 p.m. Um, Re Reva Precision Manufacturing is going to be talking about their their company and their production, but also some exciting products that they've developed. Okay. Is this being shown? Guess Wine Sisma? Guess Wine since 1914 presents? Yep, I can see that. If I advance now? No, we're still seeing the production mode. Do you want to click okay. on me the presentation and I can try to launch it from here for you? What if I went like this? Yeah, just try I mean, I suppose I could. Yep, it might work for us. Let's do that. Is this working okay? It is working. Great. Okay. So this is Sisma's main headquarters right here, a family-owned business, as I mentioned, since 1961, about an hour and a half north of Venice, Italy. Sisma is distributed in over 30 countries around the world and is considered by many to be the leading provider of laser technologies for the jewelry industry. Uh, within that, uh, they got their start with chain milling machines. Uh, they developed the automatic laser for chain milling machines. Um, and there are many things that encompass that, uh, but they have over 50 different styles of chain machine, which we'll see shortly. Uh, but they are a complex and highly proficient manufacturer of laser technologies, additive manufacturing, and chain making. And of course, laser welding, which will be the focus in today's presentation. This is metal sintering, which would bypass the entire conventional process as we know of manufacturing jewelry with lost wax casting. As many are familiar with 3D printers, the MySint machine will grow finished jewelry out of precious metal powder. Seasma employs some 250 employees. Uh, spread across right now three different factories. Uh, this is one factory shown here of theirs. Uh, they are actually in the process and finalizing. They built a new factory about the size of a football field where they're going to be bringing three separate facilities now all under one roof. Uh, but this is a highly innovative company and they make machines like they're going out of style. And innovation is going to be a prime focus in today's webinar. After sales service and support for guess for Seisma, excuse me, is handled by Guesswine. With and actually I'll let this finish. Okay. All right. So moving along, uh, I was briefly touching upon service, you know, as many people consider laser welders out there. And again, this isn't a pitch, but it's a reassurance that, yes, these machines are Italian made. And guess why is classified what's called an agent. So we're an agent of Sisma. 
we're full service. So we handle sales and after sales service and support. We have a full-time SISMA technician. I'm technically trained in these machines as well. All spare parts, all consumables, anything associated with these machines, guess wine stands behind and we stock in-house. So God forbid if there is an issue, you don't have to wait for something to come from Italy. It comes from Bridgeport, Connecticut. So moving on, let's talk about technology, okay? There are a few different machines here that are pictured. And Seasma, of course, works in many different industries. They work in jewelry, they work in medical, they work in dental, and they work in what we call industry or industrial applications. Uh, so with over 100 types of machines uh, in their wheelhouse, we're going to be focusing primarily on five machines today, uh, which are manual laser welders. Uh, manual laser welder is referring to the operation of you, the end user, having that control with an action that's driven by the foot pedal. So it's a manual operation that causes the laser to fire. If you would note at the bottom of this, it says Google keyword Seisma, or excuse me, Guesswine Seisma Jewelry for machine listings and information. You could go to guesswine.com and see the different machines that are offered. But if you type in those three keywords into any search engine, it'll pull up a beautiful page that shows all of the machines as well as specifications on them and further information on them. Uh, with these being the focus, I'm going to briefly touch on these machines and then I'm going to get into more complexities. The things you need to know about Seisma laser welders, they all have a two-year warranty including the flash lamp. They all have Leica microscopes. Uh, obviously, exceptions would be LMD Vision, the third one, along with the Lynx, which is the fifth one. But any machine made by Seisma that has a stereo microscope, they are made by Leica. Shot diameter goes from 0.2 millimeters to 2.0 millimeters. All of these machines are water-cooled along with forced air. They all have Ethernet and Argon hookups, or excuse me, Ethernet and USB hookups. They all have Argon and air compressor hookups. The first model shown on all the way to the left is referred to as the LMD Ready series. What looks like a black accordion there is an actual open front. There's leather hanging strips there. Uh, to protect you from any light emission, uh, but it is an open source concept, if you will. Uh, further noting with all of these machines, uh, controls are done on the screen and inside the chamber, uh, but you do see a different look to many of these. But what I want to address is that with the exception of the LMD Ready, which is all the way to the left, the internal components, which I'm going to be featuring, are the same in the next four machines and the technology for most of the for that Seisma offers is present in all of the machines. So without further ado, let's get into the nuts and bolts here. Okay. Mechanics of lasers. All right. What is a laser? How does it work? What does it really do? And uh, applications of jewelry. I'm not going to get too technical here, but I am. And this is for new people and maybe existing users of, wow, okay, I hold my piece of jewelry inside the chamber, I step on the pedal, but what's going on, okay? All of these manual laser welders uh, used in jewelry are referred to as ND YAG solid state lasers. ND YAG is a crystal that's grown in a laboratory. The crystal is comprised of yttrium, aluminum, and garnet. And what happens is it's doped with a rare earth element called neodymium. When it is doped with neodymium, it basically becomes reactive. And this reactive crystalline rod, it's cylindrical in nature, and it's highly reactive to light. So in any, any manual laser welder, you have two primary things. You have what's called the active medium, which is the YAG crystal, and you have the pump mechanism, which is a flash lamp. And so what happens is when you step on the pedal, internally what happens is the flash lamp pulses. It's basically like a halogen light bulb on steroids, if you will. But what happens inside this YAG crystal, this tightly atomized structure, when it is solid, when there's nothing going on in the way of light, it's stable. But what happens when you step on the pedal and light gets exposed to this crystal, it becomes unstable. So what happens is you have an atom that floats around this electron. And when light hits it, the atom basically freaks out and it becomes unstable. 
The electron shoots out. All that electron wants to do is go back home to the atom. So during this process, which happens in split seconds, when that electron shoots out, what happens now is it's basically pulled back home, back to the solid state. But when it's pulled back down, that electron releases a photon, and that photon is the laser light. Of course, you have these are you can't even see them with the naked eye. The laser beam being formed, the wavelength is 1,064 nanometers, so it is invisible to the eye. But what happens is when you step on that pedal, the electrons shoot out. They come back home. They make these photons. And when you have this concentration of photons, as you see in this picture here, the energy light is going to shoot backwards of a 100% reflective mirror. It's then going to go back through this crystalline YAG crystal and upwards towards a 50% reflective mirror. What that means is 50% of the light is exiting. And from there, it's going through, there's lenses, there's mirrors, there's a focus block, another mirror, and ultimately it's coming down into your chamber and reacting with a piece of metal that you're holding. It's important to know this technology because there are different mechanisms of powering the flash lamp in laser welders. So before getting into that, I want to touch on these three things, okay? For, uh, no, I'm going to go backwards. So... Yes, it, sorry, I'm juggling which way I want to go. Before getting into how this lamp is powered, I want to talk a few different things about how Seismo machines are separate than the others. When this technology first came to start, it was around 1992, with Rovin, who developed the manual laser welder. When these were first developed, as you can see in this picture here, flash lamp and YAG crystal, these are housed inside a chamber. So you're wondering, you step on the pedal and the lamp flashes, but really, how does that work? Well, the chamber that these are inside of conventionally has been a gold-plated chamber, 99.9% .9 pure gold, and it's that way for its high reflectivity. In addition to, water is continuously being pumped through this gold-plated cavity because this area where the beam is being generated gets hot. So you have a gold-plated cavity, water is being pumped through, the laser beam is being made, and there you have it. Brilliant by Rothen, okay? The way the technology has advanced beyond this, Seisma started working with the laters right around the turn of the millennium. And when they did so, they saw disadvantages to the gold plating that was inside these cavities. The biggest issue you have with them is that the water needs to be clean and pure using distilled, excuse me, deionized water. What will happen is if you do have any mineral content in that water, Minerals, metal, is electrically conductive. So as this laser beam is being formed, if you have points of contact in the way of metal, it's going to affect how that laser beam is coming out. It should be perfectly linear. You don't want it arcing. If the beam does arc due to mineral content, the 99.9% .9 pure gold is not going to corrode on you, but that arcing can cause it to flake. And if you do get flaking, it's a basic digression of uh, deterioration of that cavity, and at some point that cavity would need to be replaced. Uh, if it's not replaced, it can go to much greater lengths. The flash lamp can blow, creating craters. You could blow the YAG crystal. You get into expensive issues there. Did you uh, say something? I'm sorry? Nope. Oh, okay. So, say again, I'm sorry? No, you're good to go. No, you're good to go. Okay, cool. So what Sisma has done, and this is in the way of technology, Sisma said, okay, there are disadvantages to this gold-plated chamber. We're going to make ours out of a ceramic material. So Sisma's chamber that houses the flash lamp and the YAG crystal are ceramic. They're done to a high gloss on the inside to be able to offer that reflectivity. The great news with this is now you don't have a material that could potentially flake off. In addition to, rather than using deionized water, you're able to use distilled water. And all the water that circulates through this machine, any laser welder, is now running through a deionizing water filter. This filter contains deionizing salts that are basically grabbing onto any micron-sized metal micro, uh, mineral particulate to prevent it on going through this ceramic chamber where the flash lamp and YAG crystal are housed. So what that means is with advanced technologies and lasers, you don't have to replace a gold-plated cavity. 
In addition to, you don't have to change the water as often. It's done once a year with these machines, and you're just using distilled water. So in the way of how have lasers progressed for jewelry from 1992 to the present, this is a big thing because now it costs you less to maintain because you don't have to change the water as often, which means you don't have to change filters as often. And that also means you won't have to replace this ceramic cavity. Okay. In addition to just touching upon mechanics of lasers, neither here nor there, all Seasma laser welders have an Ethernet port for remote diagnostics. The goal is to eliminate service calls with these machines. So what happens with Seasma laser welders is any time a shot is fired inside the machine, it's being recorded in a log. And not just the parameters used for the shots, but also what the water temperature is, the fan speed, the capacitor voltage, so we can look remotely from Guesswine, which I'll get into in a second, to say, okay, the laser was firing fine, here something happened. And we're able to pinpoint what changed internally on the machine. We're able to log into your machine, my Seisma technician, Chris Chapman would, when you provide a unique user ID and password. So not anybody could log in. But the benefit to this is there's no service calls. You don't have to have a technician to come on site to figure out what's wrong with your machine or to do a part replacement. Everything can be done remotely from Guesswine, and there is no fee for this. The last thing I'm going to touch upon is a bit complex, and I'm not going to talk too much on it. But newer laser welders have what's called pulse shaping. Many of you who are experienced with lasers may have heard pulse shaping. Those of you who have not or have no experience with laser welders have no clue as to what I'm talking about. And that's fine. But what you need to know is this. The energies made by a laser welder can be manipulated. The benefit to manipulating energies has to deal with specific alloys that are used in jewelry and how energy in the form of light reacts with those. And when we're speaking of different metals, the primary factors are reflectivity and melting temperature. Certain metals are going to be across the board, uh, but as we do know in the United States, we do not mandate what percentage of alloys need to be in precious jewelry. So when you have a piece of 14 karat that's 58.5% pure gold, you're going to have silver in there, you're going to have copper in there, you're going to have zinc in there. But what percentages of each of those metals you have is ambiguous. So the way to combat that is by utilizing what's called pulse shaping. And this is another technological advance. What this does is it is basically allowing the end user to either ramp up the energy, which is annealing the metal to whether it's combating reflectivity or to prevent stress fractures, and you have the ability to cool the energy, primarily to be able to prevent any kind of fractures. The benefit to this is all modern laser welders today are going to come with pulse shaping. But if you're somebody who is alloying in-house and you know specifically what percentage of alloys you have in your jewelry, the Seasma machines will also allow you to build your own pulse shape. So you can specifically identify the percentage of metal, the melting temperature, the reflectivity, and dial your machine in to work within those mediums to give you ideal laser welding solutions. Okay? That is some mechanics of lasers as well as where technology has come into play. So the biggest things on this slide, knowing that machines now, all Seasma laser welders have a ceramic cavity. They all have Ethernet ports for remote diagnostics. And if you know your alloys, maybe you have an XRF machine or if you're alloying yourself, you have the ability to customize your pulse shapes to specifically dial in your machine for optimum results. My next slide is really what sets Seisma apart. And this is a huge boost in technology. As mentioned, when laser welders first started coming out from jewelry in the early 90s, it was a new technology. So some brilliant minds and a lot of money determined how can we best make this accessible and ideal for very finite applications within jewelry. For applications of that would either be time consuming or potentially dangerous or risk associated with, how can the laser welder come in and assist? And for those who have laser welders know that once you've walked through the door of owning a laser welder, you can't turn back because you find more and more uses for these machines. 
But here's what sets Sisma apart, okay? When they started developing laser welders, they looked at what everyone else was doing in the world, not even specific to jewelry because lasers have been used for in the military since the 70s. They've been used in a multitude of industries, but of course, manual, fine, very precise laser welding is, you know, 30 years old in the jewelry industry. So Sisma said, all right, we need to figure out how to optimize this for our customers. I show a graph here, and this was a test that was done with Sisma using the same energies in what's called a voltage-driven machine versus a current-driven machine. Which one do you have? How do you know the difference? Well, that's an easy answer. On every laser welder, being a manual laser welder, you have the ability to manually adjust four primary settings, okay? You're gonna have how hot the lamp gets, how much energy is going to it. In voltage-driven machines, this is a, your first setting, and it's called volts, and this is an adjustable setting. With other machines, such as Sisma, it's a percentage of power. The other settings you have are going to be, next up is milliseconds, uh, which is adjusting pulse duration, which is the length of time in which the laser beam is exposed in a given area in thousands of a second. Yes, I said milliseconds, but they are one one thousandth of a second. Still, blink of an eye. In addition to that, you have the ability to adjust the number of shots per second and the actual diameter of the laser beam, the size, okay? When you're dealing with laser welders, every laser welder is going to have milliseconds, shots per second, and diameter. But what will vary is how you control the energy of the flash lamp basically how hot it is or how bright it's getting, okay? With voltage control, if your machine has voltage as that first setting, you'll know you have a voltage-driven machine. The higher you turn that number, if you're going from 250 volts to 300 volts, that's making the lamp burn brighter. It's burning hotter. There's more energy from the capacitors going to that flash lamp. Of course, your electrical box inside a laser welder is doing many things. It's running fans, it's running a water pump, but a lot of that energy is going to the flash lamp to power that lamp. There are advantages and disadvantages to these technologies. With voltage control, as it is an older technology, the cost of the control board or circuit board, if you will, is lower cost. The technology, like anything, has been around for a while. As time goes on, of course, something starts off expensive, like a television. As it catches on, it gets lower in cost. As evident, people were spending $30,000 on laser welders all of 10 years ago. Costs have come down, and it's neither here nor there. There are reasons for that. But the biggest thing that I want to identify is disadvantages of voltage control versus advantages of what Sisma uses, which is current control. As you can see in this graph, the, dis the biggest disadvantage to voltage control is the energy isn't stable. With every single shot that you take, you get a spike of energy and it drops off. For those familiar with lasers, we would almost call this a ramp down effect, where you get a lot of energy and it drops. The disadvantages to this is the energy isn't stable. You could get slight variances in each and every shot that you take with a laser welder. But in addition to the energy not being stable, you run the risk of overpowering the lamp. You could turn the voltage up too high and blow the lamp, but also because every single shot that's driven to the lamp has a variable amount of voltage, it's stressing the lamp. It's not offering it a continuous flow of energy, which means that it could shorten the flash lamp life. Now comes Sisma, and what they utilize is current control. The difference is this. With a voltage control machine, as I mentioned, you're adjusting that voltage on the machine. So you're going to change it 250 volts, 300 volts, 350 volts. So by you adjusting that, it's sending a signal to the motherboard, which is then sending a signal to the capacitors of how much energy to expel to the lamp. With the Sisma machines, what they do with current control is when you turn the key on inside the chamber, the capacitors charge all the way up to 600 volts. So that energy now is at max capacity. But with a manual laser welder, as we talked, you can adjust those parameters. The energy of the lamp is not measured in volts, but percentage of overall current. So now if you want to set your machine to say 5% of 600 volts, you do that. But the difference 
is that it's not having to work extra hard to expel that energy. The energy is already there. And the machine is now just tinkering it out, if you will. To give you an idea, we melt white gold with the laser welder with Sisma. You're around, in some instances, 2, 3, 4% power. Minimal amounts of energy. Lasers start at 150 joules. So there's a lot of horse under the hood, if you will. But the advantages to current control, as you see in this graph, the energy is stable, right? You have almost a linear line of energy that the, uh, the capacitors are now emitting to the flash lamp. So not only are you getting stable energy, this is going to result in the quality of the shot that the machine exhibits. You're going to get high repeatability. You're going to see each and every shot is going to look the same as long as you don't adjust your settings. But also, it's going to extend the life of the flash lamp. You don't have this irregular energy. These lamps are going to average 50 million shots, minimum around 20 million shots. I've seen a counter just under 70 million shots. So what that means, you go 20 to 25 years before you might have to change your flash lamp in a Sisma machine. This technology is newer. It's higher cost. The circuit board is larger than a voltage-controlled laser welder. But rest assured, these machines are priced in line with every other laser that's out there. But this advent in technology of offering the lamp to be powered with current rather than voltage is a superior technology, which is why SISMA is as large as they are and why they're distributed in so many countries around the world. One big technological advance, current control. Moving on. What do we want to talk about next in the way of technology? And this is a technology-based seminar about what's changed in laser welders over the last 20, 25, 2022 will be 30 years. The next thing I'm going to show you is what's called the SynchroView coaxial camera system. Uh, this is now officially patented. This technology only came about in December. Maybe it was November. Uh, but SISMA has had many machines that have had a camera integration into their machine. When they have been going through technology and how to best optimize their machinery, they just developed this patented SynchroView co coaxial camera system. The best thing about this is unlike other cameras that are out there, this one is actually built into the optic head inside the chamber. So it is a true line of sight. If you remember I showed here, going back to it, there are two different, well, there's three different machines that have this large 10.1 inch, it's a high definition LCD touchscreen, okay? These three machines have a camera integrated. So no, it cannot be added to these other machines because the motherboard's different, of course, the housing of the machine is different. But with the SynchroView camera system, now you are able to take your technology that much further. Uh, that machine was a bestseller for us last year. The reason is, is it cross collaborated between both retailers and manufacturers alike. Uh, the camera system that was in the DT, which was the bestseller, is good because you now can have an operator looking through the microscope, and with a big 10 inch screen, you can have somebody standing behind them learning exactly what they're doing. So you can use it as a training tool. Retailers like that machine because you can display and export that video onto a television in your showroom so you can advertise that you do laser welding. Or I have some customers that will run it through a recorder. You can buy these little USB HDMI recorders on Amazon for around $75. And if you're working on a, a fantastic job that you want to show it, the world that you did this, you can hit record on one of these recorders. The machine plugs into this recorder and you can capture that content and then use it on social media for advertising. You can use it on your website, on you know, Facebook, Instagram, to advertise your laser welding. So I'm going to show you the camera system, and I hope there isn't too much of a lag, but the clarity and precision that you get out of the patented synchro view camera system is simply unmatched. There's nothing else like it in the industry, and wow, when you see one of these in person, people are typically floored, especially as a retailer when a customer comes into your store you could do inspection under the laser welder, and the customer can now look at the screen. They could see that worn prong. They could see a stress fracture. They could see visually why their piece of jewelry needs to have attention paid to it immediately. And so the SynchroView camera system 
has never made it easier for a customer to see what you're doing, for a trainee to see what the instructor is doing, and man, is it beautiful. So this is a huge advent in technology. And yeah, laser polishing with Seismal lasers is something wildly advantageous. Polish in hard to reach places, and this is possible with all laser welders. So as you can see here, further polishing, but noting, of course, the brilliance in the visual aid of whether it's internal or external, what you could do with technology now in the way of a laser welder has never been done before. Uh, prior to this, um, there are many different ways, whether it's AV cables, you know, the red and white and yellow cables to be able to broadcast video, which is going to be at a lower resolution, or Lyco for years made an attachment that can be housed between the microscope and the body of the machine that would have a video output, but now you don't have any of that. Now you have the camera integration and you have a screen with these machines to be able to export that video and make it easier than ever for people to see what you're doing. So as you can see, a number of tasks here. Uh, Sisma made this video, and I'll get into further videos further in the presentation. Uh, but prong retipping, porosity repair, ring sizing, chain repair. Um, I'll get into the nuances of how Sisma machinery and technology makes it easiest, easier than ever to accomplish those tasks. Uh, but certainly. <clears throat> Showing the beauty and the precision of the Seisma laser welders is simply unmatched. All right, we'll let this run for about another 30 seconds just to have people captivated. And I hope you are too. And hard to reach areas, of course, is one of the biggest strengths of a laser welder. You don't have anything impending where that laser beam can go. So inside of pieces, underneath pieces, in gallery spots that you otherwise cannot conventionally reach. All right, so I'm gonna pause this here. Okay, so beyond, now we talked about advance in technology pertaining to laser welding. We talked about <clears throat> a ceramic cavity not having to use deionized water anymore and not having to replace the housing on those units. We talked about remote diagnostics, which guess wine does not charge for, to be able to log into your machine remotely when a problem arises. And rest assured, anyone who knows lasers, at some point, some problem will occur. Uh, but of course, I mean, these are very high quality main machines and Sisma is making most of this stuff in house. Uh, the ability to make your own pulse shapes, the advent of current control versus conventional voltage control. The synchro view integrated coaxial camera system with a digital video output in the way of HDMI. The next thing I want to talk about here is two features that make seasonally unique, which are first pulse suppression and smart spot technology. So I'm going to show the first or the third slide again. These two technologies are available in all of these machines except for the LMD Ready, okay? The LMD Ready, it's a price point. I mean, it has all the technologies that Seasma utilizes, but these are the strengths of how technology is going to yield greater control to the end user. So the next two features of smart spot technology and first pulse suppression are in these other four machines. So starting off, first pulse suppression, what is that? Uh, it's that. Really, you're suppressing the first pulse. What happens with laser welders is when that YAG crystal is in an idle state for a short period of time, I talked initially at the beginning about how those electrons want to come home to the atom, right? They just want to come home. That's physics, electron inside the atom. What happens is when they do all settle and you step on the pedal again, that first hit is going to come out hot, okay? Uh-oh moment if you're working on, I hate to say, a hollow rope chain hollow earring posts, maybe it's an antiquated Victorian filigree piece where there's barely any metal left. It's been in two generations, it's gotten worn to death in very, very thin metal. So what happens is with first pulse suppression, seasonal machines have the ability to block that first hit. That first hit, once the YAG crystal, once the atoms have settled and it gets re-excited again by you stepping on the pedal, 
the atoms are going, whoa, everything's freaking out. So that first hit is going to come out hot. You can block that first hit with a Caesar machine by enabling first pulse suppression. It's a setting on the screen. And what happens is all those machines that I mentioned have a shutter integrated into them. If you picture like a camera shutter. And by your user control, you can control when that shutter opens and closes. So with first pulse suppression, you are suppressing or stopping that first pulse by the shutter staying closed. You could set the machine to five shots a second, 10 shots a second. The machine can fire 50 shots a second, and you won't ever go there. But know that even if you set it for, say, five shots a second, if you have first pulse suppression enabled, that shutter is going to stay closed only for that first split second, and then it's motorized. It's going to open right after. So what it's doing is giving the end user greater control and working with delicate or fragile pieces. If you have something very thin, as I mentioned, if you have something that is very, very thin in the way of hollow rope chains, which, God, they're a nightmare. These machines can do that. By blocking that first pulse, it's preventing you on, from blowing through that first hit. Even at the lowest settings, if the wall you're talking might be microns thick, you can easily blow through something. So this is preventing you from doing so. In conjunction with first pulse suppression, another SEASMA feature and technology is smart spot technology. As I showed on the first slide, the fourth slide, we talked here, you can see hydro reflective mirror, crystal flash lamp reflective mirror, and down here it says optical resonator. So what that means, inside every laser welder, and I'm going to speak on the Seismo machines, there's what's called a resonator. And this resonator is a big metal housing. It runs the length of the machine and it's right in the middle. It's covered, there's a cover on this resonator. So even if dust or particulate polishing debris is in your shop, and there are two vents in the machine, if dust does come into the machine, these sensitive areas are inside this resonator. Lenses, mirrors, and also this, as I mentioned, ceramic cavity that houses the YAG crystal and flash lamp. Smart spot technology, Seisma came out with about three years ago, and they redesigned the positioning of the components inside this resonator. And what they have found is if you're firing a high number of repetitions, and this is more for advanced users and even beyond jewelry would say mold repair, where you're going to be using very high repetitions in the way of automation. So you might be doing 20, 30, 40 shots a second. With jewelry, advanced users are going to be at 15 shots a second, and that's highly advanced for things like ring sizings, channel rebuilds, um, and of course, Seasma manufactures automatic laser welders, which don't stop. They can run 24 hours a day. They're using their chain machines. So with smart spot technology, Seasma redesigned the resonator. And what they found is if you're doing a great number of repetitions, at some point what's going to happen is the quality of the welds are going to start to change because the machine's working in overdrive to maintain the energy that's being delivered to the lamp. It's hard to sustain that because the capacitors, your electrical box, is pulling energy from the wall. So if you're firing a high number of shots, you might start to see irregularities in the quality of your weld. With smart spot technology, Seisma overcame this hurdle. And so as of about three years ago, they said, okay, now with this new technology, you could literally fire 1,000 consecutive shots, not that you ever would, and every single shot will look identical, so long as you don't change the parameters. The advantages to both of these features here, first, smart, first pulse suppression and smart spot technology, are giving the end user greater control for any task that they're doing. So initially I was talking first pulse suppression with hollow material. Now I'm talking about smart spot technology for sizings and channel rebuilds. If you couple these two items together, now as the end user, you're able to work with settings to a much greater capacity to be able to accomplish any task that comes your way with the laser welder. These are things that Seisma values themselves in, is coming up with new technologies that are going to give the end user greater experiences with their machine and greater control to accomplish anything under the sun. So with these two now technology features, and we talked about ways how their internal technologies are advantageous for generating the beam, now we're talking about the end product of what you actually get as a result of working with a laser welder. So these are wildly advantageous. People who have them swear by them. 
You might use one feature or not for pulse suppression, depending on how comfortable you feel. But every machine, except for the LMD Ready, has smart spot technology integrated, and they're a fabulous success. Moving on, I have one last feature that I'm going to touch upon today, and that is how technology plays into the world of training. It's great that you got this expensive machine whatever you spend, 14, 16, 18, 20, 25,000 dollars on a laser welder. That's nice. How do you learn how to use it? Well, with Guess Wine, our goal, it's our modus, our company objective and mission to state that if you buy something from us, you want to know how to use it. We've gone through different revelations of how to best train people with laser welders. Yes, you're going to get a, what they call it a specification sheet, which is going to give you starting parameters for doing everything from prong retips to ring sizing, chain repair and porosity repair in yellow, rose, white and green gold, sterling silver, platinum, stainless steel, titanium for eyeglass frames. But is that enough? No, because you don't know how to hold the jewelry. You don't know what happens if you turn the settings up too high. You don't even know what to look for as far as a quality of weld. So what Guesswine and Seisma developed, actually Guesswine developed it, Seisma of course provided us with the technology to do this, is now every machine that's purchased from Guesswine with Seisma Laser, you're going to get a USB thumb drive. And this USB drive has installation and setup videos, but most importantly, it has training videos. Many of you who are experienced on lasers, maybe you had someone come into your shop and teach you how to use the laser. Maybe you went to a class somewhere where they taught you how to use the laser. But what happens in both of those instances? Wow, I had so much information packed in my brain over one day, two days, you get back to your shop and, oh, man, what did he say about this? How do I go about doing that? Well, we changed that. So now you're going to get videos, and we've been doing this for over a year, with each and every machine. We talk about how to hold pieces and how energy in the form of laser light is going to drive metal in a certain direction, how angles play into a certain result. So do note, of course, the clip that I'm showing here was done with the old style camera. I featured two slides ago, the new style camera. Those machines only started shipping in December. We had plans to record, and we do still have plans to record more videos, uh, actually a volume collection of videos, uh, and then COVID happened. So we're hoping that as soon as we get to 2021, uh, we will be able to resume this. Uh, for any Seismo customers who are listening that already own a machine, you would get all of these videos complimentary. For anyone who doesn't, right now you get 11 videos, and there's more to come. So to give you a little snippet here, here's just a picture with the old camera system. Just to give it a little bit more. If I'm gonna go over here, you see how this is a little bit thin on this side. So I'm just gonna go force a little bit of metal right onto the side. Really just to shape the prong a little bit. See how that worked? And it looks a little rough, right? Okay, so that's just a snippet. The actual video that comes with the machines to show you how to do that four-prong retip, and that is a diamond, it's not a CZ or a moissanite. Um, go into much greater detail as all four prongs are worked on there. Uh, but you do get prong retips, you get micro pave rebeads. Um, if stones fall out, you literally have to rebuild a bead. Uh, chain repair, sizings, engraving removal. If someone come into the shop, they have a stainless steel watch, and there's an engraving on the back. They want it gone. You could do that with a laser welder. So how does technology play a part in training? Well, with the LNDT, again, which is this machine right here, the one with the Leica microscope and the large screen, again, it has a digital video output. We ran it through a recorder, and we recorded what was shown on the screen onto a USB, and then we were able to develop these videos. Uh, again, mentioning that as that video was done with the old style, um, new videos are coming. They're going to be of much higher quality, and it's a huge advent in technology as far as learning to train on these machines. Yes, Guesswine offers classes at Guesswine. Yes, we also offer a highly proficient and skilled over 20-year master bench jeweler that is for hire if you want on-site training at your facility. Uh, but certainly, with this feature, you can now start off training for free. 
So it can end up saving you a lot of money. In summation, that's me, not my best photo day. That's Chris, he's my Seisma technician. He's been to Guess Wine for just over three years, but he had prior laser experience coming to Guess Wine. Uh, but we are full service. Uh, so as mentioned, we are an agent of Seisma. Uh, everything is handled at Guess Wine. So everyone who's bought in Guess Wine from, some, uh, excuse me, bought in Seisma from Guess Wine has my personal cell phone number. The good news is I don't even have any missed calls today. I don't have any yesterday. I hardly get calls, if at all. I think I had one last week, but it was maybe a year before that, where a customer with an existing machine reached out to me. These machines run very smooth. They are very high-quality machines. As my friend would say, these are the Ferraris of laser welder. But they don't have a price tag like a Ferrari, which is good. But the analogy with that is they're very sleek-looking machines. They have advent of technology in many different facets, and they run very efficiently. They're all tabletops. They start at 150 joules and go up to 210 joules for the tabletop versions. Uh, they weigh about 120 pounds. Uh, it's heavy for a tabletop. They are 230 volt. The reason for all of that is because of the three large capacitors that are powering the flash lamp. Talking about 600 volts and dialing in your settings, these machines generate a lot of power, and they can do virtually anything under the sun when it comes to jewelry. Don't be mistaken, a laser welder is another tool in the shop, just like your torch, your hammer, your saw frame. So it isn't an end all. However, it allows retailers and manufacturers alike the ability to accomplish tasks that are either cumbersome or time consuming, or they might not be able to be accomplished at all. So in summation, here I am. I am one of the faces of Guess Wine and Seisma Laser Technologies. You will see me at trade shows of the likes of MJSA, JCK, JIS, um, you may have seen me on social media. If you ever see me, come say hello. I love talking to people. I'd love to meet you. My family's been in the business for over 70 years. And I would like to thank again, as this kind of concludes my presentation, Ms. Hill, the MJSA organization, the Guest Wine Company for presenting this, and of course, Seisma for giving us these technologies that are allowing jewelers to excel their business and offer higher quality jobs in the way of repair and custom design and fabrication like never before. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. How do I unshare screen? Can you hear me? I can hear you. My microphone looks like it's still muted. There's a little red light on, but okay. If you can hear me, we're good. <laughs> I can hear you. Hey, Kalina wants to know, can she weld on the back of fine silver that has enamel on the front? Because she's having difficulty getting her post to stay on during enameling. Ah, that is quite the challenge. You know, certainly the, the issues with silver, and there's two issues. The first, it's the most reflective metal on the planet. Okay. When it comes to laser welders, yes, there are two factors that we consider, no matter what material we're working on. What the melting temperature is, certain melting temperatures need more energy, the purity level, and also the degree of reflectivity. So what happens with silver is it is as any laser welder salesman or operator will attest to, it's the most reflective metal. So it takes that much more energy to be able to combat the reflectivity, which means that you have to turn your settings up higher. But what's also happening is in addition to the reflectivity, you have this heat conductor. I mean, what is going to conduct heat faster than silver? You know this from polishing. I mean, it, silver gets hot. So what happens is when you're hitting it with a laser, you're going to feel that piece of silver getting so, so hot in your hands. Of course, if that piece is getting hot, you run the risk, in this case, of fracturing that enamel. The solution to this, yes, it can be done. Yes, you have to go slow. There are ways to do that with the machine. Of course, you could fire, let it cool down fire, take a couple shots, you'll feel the piece start heating up in your fingers. If you could feel it in your fingers, of course, that means it's conducting. So don't let it get to the point where you can't hold it, because that means that enamel is now feeling the same heat. So the solution is to go slow. As you start feeling the warmth, let it cool down. You can further accelerate the cooling process with an air compressor. All of these machines have an air compressor port hooked into them. 
So you can hook an air compressor up. And if your workpiece gets too hot, it's inside the chamber. Move your hand over, touch it, blast some cool air on it. Of course, the heat is relative because if you do get something too hot and you go cool too fast, that will also cause a fracture. So it is a gentle balance game of going slow, having the right settings, and not letting the piece heat up. But to answer your question, yes, you can absolutely accomplish that task with a laser welder. Where were you, Adam, when I was learning the laser weld? Because my good laser welding stars are from silver. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why, you know, the problem with silver, too, of course, is it's so highly reflective. There are a few different tricks to be able to combat the reflectivity. But if you don't know how to combat those facets, or if you don't have a machine that's powerful enough, which the seasonal machines can do silver, what will happen is you might just see, like, a plume of smoke, which means that that laser beam has bounced. And anybody who has had their machine set at the silver settings and felt that beam bounce and hit their fingers, it, oh, you you know it. I mean, it, it, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. So, yes, that is a possibility. I mean, there are solutions to combating that reflectivity. Uh, but, yeah, you know, many tricks of the trade to make these solutions possible. So, Kalina's following up with that one. She said she's sec successfully done it with a Sparky 2, wouldn't uh -huh. an ear post be pretty quick, or would it be better to laser weld the post on before the enamel? Ah, so it's an earring we're talking about. Uh, yeah, I mean, get the earring post on before the enamel. That's an easy solution. If the earring post is not on and the enamel is already cured on the piece, you could still do it. When you're talking an earring post, it's a thin piece of metal. You don't need that many shots. I mean, basically, you could take that earring post... And because you're welding here, you could do three to four shots around that earring post where it's attaching to that base. You, with the right settings, you will get a slight indentation. From there, you would take, if you're working with a fine silver wire, if it's a hard silver solder wire, the new craze, of course, is uh, this 5% platinum silver wire. You would apply a little piece of that wire there and basically fill back out this now recessed area that you created. So to be able to attach an earring post to something that is sensitive, let's take something more than enamel. Say there's an opal on the other side, right? You have a, cor a piece of coral, you have an onyx, things that are highly susceptible to heat. Yes, they can be done. Just as we, I mentioned initially, you need to go slow. But with an earring post, you're only firing maybe a total accumulation of about eight shots. So yes, absolutely. Interesting. I'm curious about something. What problem do you end up solving with customers most often? The correct settings is the biggest thing. Okay. Right? Somebody's working on something and they're not getting their desired result, which is why one great thing that we did at Guess Wine is I started a Facebook group earlier this year. For those listening, this is more incentive to get a Seisma laser welder. We have a Facebook group. It's called Seisma Laser Welder for Jewelry. It is only open to those who actively own a Seasma laser welder. This community right now has about 100 people in it. No manufacturers, and I have many manufacturers who have a lot of Seasma machines. Clearly, they're too busy. But it's virtually all retailers. So now what I encourage people is, hey, if you have a problem, if you have a question, yeah, call me, text me, which many do. Post it in the Facebook group, and you will see this community swarm to solve your problem. Again, this is all, I'm the admin. Everyone's got to provide their serial number where they bought the machine. Um, it is global. So, I mean, I do have a few people outside of the United States that are in there. Uh, but nonetheless, we developed at Guesswine a community for other end users to interact with other end users to specifically dial in the settings that they are using on their machine to accomplish a task. So, what otherwise would be a back-and-forth phone conversation with, okay, let's see where your settings are at. I want you to change this a little bit. Get your diameter correct. Lower your settings. We're going to work up your settings. Now it's like, well, post it in the Seasma Facebook group, and people will chime in with exactly what settings they're using. That's really cool. Plus, you're moderating it so people can trust that the quality of the – I mean, there's a lot of Facebook groups out there talking about a lot of jewelry making and – there are a lot of bad answers out there. So knowing that you curated this group and that you're moderating it is very beneficial. Yeah, I mean, it is it is a directly driven focus group. I had a customer, I mean, a machine sell every week at Guess Why. 
And I had somebody who got a machine, I want to say it was two or three weeks ago, and he's a pretty passive gentleman. But he had a question, and I encouraged him to post it in the group. And he did. And then he posted another question. And once he saw the feedback from people, he reached out to me directly and said, you know, Adam, I, I hate Facebook. And I said, huh, me too. <laughs> but he said, I felt so comfortable posting in this group because it's not just a group where, like, some people might have an idea, but they're using a different machine and their level of experience is different. These are people who are all working on the same machines. So the settings are all universal. So we do have this fantastic support system to benefit everyone who has a machine to really take their repair work, their fabrication to the next level. That is really cool. That's a great benefit. Well, thank you. Absolutely. So I'm waiting to see if more questions are coming through, but I have another question, which is when yes. people are first getting started with their laser welder, what's the yes. biggest barrier to success? What's the thing that you just need to get mo a lot of people past so they can start getting successful with their laser welder? That's an awesome question. You know, people will get a laser welder, first time laser welder. They've been on the bench for 20, 30, 40 years. Right? They've been using a torch for 20, 30 40 years. They have expectations, right? Sure, they're apprehensive. I mean, change is the hardest thing. It's inevitable. But, okay, now I have this machine. I want to retip a four-carat Colombian emerald. You know, I got this $16,000 machine. Here we go. You know, I don't want to pull the emerald. No. <laughs> of course not. No. Baby so, baby. The key, you know, I mean, general rule of thumb, of course, with lasers is as a beginner, even as an intermediate, don't retip on a stone or don't work on a piece of jewelry that you are not willing to replace. Meaning, of course, take it slow. Get comfortable. It's going to take anybody. And some people pick it up quicker than others. 10 to 14 hours of playing on the laser to be able to get a firm understanding of how the machine works. And again, I mentioned earlier about how angles play into situations, how material is going to flow. It takes a little time to do that. But, I mean, it's not crazy. If you talk about playing with a machine for an hour a day, it's two weeks, right? I mean, it's nothing crazy. It's such but, great advice, though, because – and I've heard it over and over myself. People either don't buy the machine or they buy the machine, and then they get frustrated because they're like, I can do it so much faster with the torch. Of course. And, and, and of course, they can right now because they know the torch and they don't know the laser welder. But Alan Bell at Rio Grande mm. always told the story about sharpening your saw. You can keep cutting down trees. The saw gets duller and duller until you actually take the time off and sharpen the saw. Then you go faster than you ever did before. So 100%. Sharpening your saw is part of learning how to learn that laser welder, and then it will be faster than the torch most of the time. Absolutely. And so, of course, I mean, it is situational, right? I mean, you know, I remember, oh, you know, I could size this men's wedding band faster with a torch than I can a laser. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's no stones. Flow solder. Call it a day, right? <laughs> With a laser welder, when you do sizing, you're going to be building up a channel, right? You need to ensure that the core is melted. So people will do different things. If you do a V-cut, and maybe you're going to use a triangle file to give some abrasion there, you need to have a point of contact, and you need to ensure that the core is melted. Otherwise, if Susie Greenberg hits her finger on a counter and the ring splits open, you've got a big problem there. So understanding fundamentals of lasers and what you need to do to be able to accomplish certain tasks are paramount. But most importantly, you have to take it in progression, right? You don't start off with retipping a four carat emerald. You know, 15 year people, they're, they're gonna look at that and say, to God, it's a $75,000 stone. I'm like, I'm gonna pull it, I'm, I'm it, gonna yeah. save it. <laughs> and of course there's, there's risk even associated with that, but that's neither here nor there. The key with the laser welder is to take it slow, which is why these videos that we're offering now, the next round that's coming up, they're gonna be volumes. We're gonna have beginner, intermediate, yeah. and advanced. So you could start at the beginner videos to do an alien post, jump rings, right? Very basic stuff that don't take many shots where there's little risk, or less risk, I should say. Intermediate would be stepping into things like chain repair, thin ring sizings, starting to work with, okay, now I understand this laser, now I'm going to start doing more complex tasks. Chain sounds easy, right? But the last thing you want is a rigid point in this chain. You need to ensure it flexes, right? So it's not a beginner task. I mean, of course, it's dependent on the style of chain. A cable chain will be a lot easier than, 
these hollow rope chains, right? You can't have that thing stiff up on you. So you have to know the fundamentals of laser and how you get the right settings to achieve that desired result and still maintain the integrity of the piece. Advanced, of course, is going to be dealing with things like prong retips, thick silver ring sizing with a laser. If you do have an onyx set in a big, thick silver signet piece, that's not a beginner task because it's going to heat up. You can't overstress, of course. If you're sizing down, you're going to release tension from the setting. I mean, there's fundamentals that you have to understand there. And also the energy that the machine needs to combat a task like that is a bit more. But ultimately, too, it comes down to a level of confidence. As your confidence increases, your confidence is only going to increase with the more hours you put on the machine. You're going to feel more comfortable because you're going to understand how it works, how to get the settings you need, how to get that end result that you need. So when you start, wow, I did this job with a laser. It took me five minutes. It would have taken me 35 with a torch. Awesome. You're confident on that job now. You have to build off of that. Don't ever get overconfident, of course, because that's when a problem happens. But as that confidence builds and you get more comfortable, the tasks that you can take on, the complexities will increase. Well, you're also pointing well, you're out also something pointing out, really important, really which, important is, which is when you're using a laser well, 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 you mean the, the physics of how the laser behaves. Yeah, those bench yeah, those skills. Bench are skills. Are bench not skills. Are not just anyone Absolutely. can pick up a laser welder and do things. Yeah, anyone could hit the foot pedal, but... It and there's something you're touching on. Hmm? And with that, it is really important because in so many words, you could fry metal to the point of no return. You sure could. Okay? You sure could. With a torch, with a laser. I mean, metal is crystals, really, really tiny crystals. And you can absolutely burn them to death, right? You can burn them to the death to the point that you cannot bring them back. I mean, you can add wire. Of course, that's adding, introducing more metal. But it's important to understand what metals might be more susceptible to that? In the way of precious metal and jewelry, with certain settings needed, palladium can be problematic because palladium can fracture on you. And palladium, granted, I mean, the metal market's gone crazy. White, white gold jewelry being manufactured now is going to be more nickel heavy than palladium. But now if you're talking about nickel versus palladium, now you're talking about a dissimilar melting temperature, dissimilar reflectivity. So there's factors to combat. And are you going to look at a piece of 14 karat white, white gold and say, uh, this one's platinum, or excuse me, this one's palladium heavy and this one's nickel heavy? You can't, unless you have an XRF, right? So understanding those principles to know that you have to start with lower settings and work your way up to not fry the metal are also crucial to having success with these machines. It's true. Well, gosh, you make me want to go buy a laser welder, and I'm not even making it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to blow more holes in my fingers, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you've presented some really incredible benefits for all of us to remember. It's a great machine. It is a great machine, or whichever version of it you choose. But you've done a lot of things to support the learning curve. And the ongoing, you know, I mean, you can encounter so many different things. You, every day somebody brings in something to repair and you discover something you never encountered before. So you've created Absolutely. a community that people can go to of people who are solving similar problems. And Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's an exciting product. Thank you so much for sharing what, what you guys yeah, are. It's all, you know. Product. None of this would have been possible 10 years ago. I mean, Facebook was still in its infancy, so maybe you could have had a group. But, of course, Seisma didn't have the machinery with digital video outputs to offer video training. Yes, current control is a factor, but doing digital remote service in the way of technical help is a newer technology. Uh, ceramic chambers. I mean, the, the list goes on about the things that Seisma has built inside of these machines they embrace technology. I mean, they embrace, I mean, as I mentioned, embracing technology, they have a machine that literally grows jewelry out of precious metal. You don't have to carve wax or use a 3D printer and cast. I mean, it, it's not there yet for the jewelry sector, right? I mean, it's cost prohibitive, yeah, it's sourcing powder metal. Like they're a little weird still, but yeah, it's close. Yes. Well, and I don't but know the you... key, hmm? I was just going to say, the key, of course, is that Seisma is innovative. They, they embrace are. technology. They want the end user to know that what they're getting can still be current 20 years from now. And these will be. I mean, they take software and firmware updates. I mean, they're basically running computers inside. 
you know, components can be swapped out as technology increases. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, technology I is... I wouldn't know this, but Sisma is such an important... I mean, in Italy, um, if, you're in, if you're working in the jewelry or technology uh, sector in Italy, Sisma is like top of the top. They are... You try to steal their employees if you can because they're so good. They hire the best people. They're constantly doing innovation. They're constantly speaking at technical conferences. Sisma is innovation, no doubt. Yeah. They are a global leader. And to take it even further than that, you know, people might look at this and say, wow, here's Adam. You know, he's a third generation in the jewelry business. Okay, he knows how the machines work. He's technically trained. He is Chris Chapman, certified SISMA technician. He knows the machines inside and out. Is that the whole support system? No. For welders alone in Italy, we have four contacts for physical hardware issues. We have two contacts for software issues, mm -hmm. and that's just welders. So there's literally a team. Yeah. I have the, guy, the gentleman who taught me laser welding and everything, Sisma. He's been with Sisma for over 30 years. He lives in Mexico. He's in Central Standard Time Zone. He is Italian. He speaks five languages. But he also, I mean, we have such a web of a network to know, at least as an end user, that the dime doesn't drop at guess why. Right? Two guys? No. We have a team of almost a dozen people that support the end user with every purchase of one of these lasers. Craig wants to know what the price range is. Uh, machines start at sixteen five for the LMD Ready 150. Um, beyond, as far as what was shown on the screen with the five, uh, the top one is the LMD Lynx 210 Joule, uh, which is 24000 uh, there is a sixth machine, which I didn't show. Sisma debuted it at the top of this year. Uh, they basically made it for a very, one of the most well-known jewelry manufacturers in the world. And they have been around for some 175 years. I'm not going to disclose the name. But this manufacturer works in molds for some of their jewelry, and they needed extraordinary power for the size of the shot, the number of shots per second, and the amount of energy needed. So Sisma developed what's called the 250 Joule Laser Welder. Of course, they have machines that go much higher than that for industrial applications. But now they also have a freestanding unit. And I didn't mention it here in this slide because, to be frank, it is overkill for jewelry. Um, but they do have a jewelry, a 250-joule machine. I mean, they sold, I think, 14 of them at the Vicenza show. They didn't think they were going to sell any other than this manufacturer buying 10 of them. And, um, and that one has a list price. They start at $25.5. Uh, but for all realistic purposes... I talk, to my, I talk to people, I don't know how many calls I get a day on these machines, and we talk about what metals are you working on, how many people are going to be using the machine, and we get into my recommendations of a machine. Generally, we narrow it down to three. Price point becomes a factor, uh, but to answer your question, sure, the machines do start at 16500 U.S. And I'm only allowed to sell in U.S. and Canada. Note that. CISMA has agents in every major country around the world. I am not permitted to sell outside the U.S. and Canada. The biggest reason, and this is mandated by CISMA, is the support system. Every country has a different support system. They want to ensure if a customer's machine goes down in Finland, they're going to wait for something to come from the United States? No way. So they mandated that, and yes, U.S. and Canada exclusively. I'm looking to see. Can you remember when we couldn't even get a quarter of that much machine for that same price? It's like yeah, a long way. Well, I had someone reach out last week, and he's like, "Oh, you're pricing the machines." You know, one that we were looking at was eighteen thousand, and ah, I was like, "You know, it's, we're looking at this one. This one's twenty-one. Okay, you know, you know, do you need these features?" He's like, "I don't care. I spent thirty thousand dollars on my machine nine years ago, so <laughs> you know, and it has half the amount of power that yours has." So. Yeah, I mean, it, it's relative. You know, when people say, when are prices going to go down further? Well, they have right now, but you got to understand the mechanics that go into these machines, right? There are expensive components. I mean, CNC, uh, CISMA has many CNC machines in house, so they do a lot of their own manufacturing. You know, with these machines, there's a circuit board inside the machine. Is CISMA soldering, you know, circuits? No, they're not. They're sourcing that. The Leica microscope, Leica is a German company. They're sourcing that, right? So there are, they can control as much as they can under one roof, but any good business model is going to say, okay, when do I manufacture versus when do I outsource? 
And of course, Sisma looks at that wholeheartedly. I mean, they're a massive operation. So they do virtually everything in-house, but there are components that they do outsource, as does every laser manufacturer out there. Well, I think we're well, I think wrapped up our questions and it's time to bring this session to a close. Any closing Next. thought you have for the group, Adam? Uh, yes. Um, I miss trade shows. <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> I mean, trade shows are so great because, you know, from attendees who are watching this right now, you know, I could feel up and down about the benefits of these machines. And I can show you videos about what they do. But to be able to meet you and shake your hand, to invite you to sit down at my machine and have you weld something, it's an invaluable experience. So when the world does resume, and hopefully it will be sooner than later, um, I invite you to come say hello to me. You know, as mentioned at the beginning, I mean, I'm at MJSA, I'm at JCK, we do JIS Miami in October. I mean, we're, we're around. I mean, I, uh, silver lining to everything COVID, I now live in California. Guess why is based in Connecticut. This happened two and a half months ago. Um, so normally I, of course, invite you into Guess Wine if you ever wanted a demonstration. Chris, my technician, is there. So he can conduct that, but I'm a people person. And with my family rooted in this industry, I love seeing what people do with jewelry, with gemstones, finding the application. I mean, seeing how the seasonal machinery just excels and over exceeds their expectations. So my closing statement to this is if you do come out to a trade show, stop on by. I'd love to shake your hand and learn a little bit about you. Um, I'd love to, of course, show you everything pertaining to these machines. And uh, if that isn't an opportunity, send me a note. Um, you know, I, I'm always around, and I, I eat, sleep, and breathe this industry. So uh, I thank everybody for attending in. And again, thank you, Ms. Hill, MJSA, Guest Wine, and Sisma. All right. Well, thank you, Adam. This was a lot of fun. I learned some new stuff. That's always fun. Um, Absolutely. And I guess we're going to go ahead and wrap. I want to thank MJSA again for taking Expo and putting it online. I think this is a great way for us to continue connecting. And in some ways, we get a much deeper look at each other than we get, you know, I, I miss the show. There's no doubt. But there's a silver lining to everything. And I really like the in-depth um, knowledge that we get from each of these sessions and each of our presenters. It, MJSA is an amazing organization because of all of its amazing members who have so much to teach and share with each other. So keep coming back. We have another MJSA Expo online session next Wednesday um, at 2 p.m. And I think I said it's Reva Precision Manufacturing. And until then, I'm going to sign off and say have a great rest of the day. Awesome. Thank you again, Miss Hill. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Right, you too. Stay safe out there. All right. Bye-bye.